you very much, and particularly if you sat through my first talk and come back, welcome back. So this talk is about uh, potentially ways to improve your memory. Um, I have a very techie husband, so when I originally wrote the title, I suddenly imagined him appearing at the talk looking very disappointed it wasn't about SSDs, so I thought I'd add the extra tagline. So anyone who wasn't here, first of all, so I'm Dr. Emma McDonald on Twitter, I'm Ninja Cats. Um, my PhD was in short-term memory and dyslexia, um, mainly different ways that dyslexics have problems with their short-term memory. So if you have dyslexics, friends and family, be kind to them, they often forget things. Um, and down the bottom, I've got my, the radio station, the rock and metal radio station I always listen to, and my wonderful cats, who are my overlords. So today we're going to be talking about memory, and I'm going to start off by getting the guys that are sat down, not the people who are walking in, to, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine what I'm saying. So close your eyes. So imagine you walk into this big space and in front of you, you see your mum. She's jumping up and down, super excited that she's got a job as an executive of a big company. So she's in charge, she's gonna be telling people what to do. Then you walk round your mum and on the floor, there's this little baby and the baby's got two different colours of plasticine and they're smashing the plasticine together so you can see the two colours smashing into each other. Now if you look off to one side, what you see is this giant jar. It's a huge jar, it's bigger than your head. You look up and in this giant jar there are these words just whizzing around, whizzing, whizzing, whizzing around inside this giant jar. And then you look to the other side of the baby and you see this magic whiteboard. There's no one stood at the whiteboard, but there's this pen flying around, drawing pictures, wiping them out, drawing diagrams, wiping them out again. Okay, so open your eyes. So that was a little bit of a tale about short-term memory. So each of the things that I talked to you there represented different areas of short-term memory. You've got the central executive that's in control, you have the episodic buffer, which binds information together. And then within short-term memory, there's believe you've got the phonological loop, which is about verbal storage. And then you have the visuospatial sketch pad, which is about um, all the visual non-verbal storage, so pictures and images. So that's about short-term memory. But today I'm talking about long-term memory. So this is about how we hold information for long periods of time. And we've got implicit memory, which is about the memory that we don't realize we have. So things like walking, talking, we don't think we need to do this. But what we're talking about today is explicit memory. So this is the memories that we know we have, we think we have. And generally that's divided into two parts. We have episodic, which is like story. So this is about our life. So if we think about Paris and I'm thinking about an episodic memory, I'll think about when I went on a trip to Paris and my husband proposed. So that's an episodic memory, so it's a story. If I'm thinking about Paris for kind of semantic meeting, I'll think about the capital of France, I'll think about facts about Paris, like it has the Eiffel Tower. And so this is the long-term memory, especially when you want to remember something that we need to think about. So what we need to do when we want to remember something in long-term memory, so we need to think about that we remember things by stories, we remember things by meaning. And if you know that, then you can help improve your memory. So you use tactics that take advantage of either stories or meaning. So we're going to do some memory tests in this talk. So if you've got a phone or a pen and paper, if you get it out, because I'm going to give you some tasks and then I'm going to ask you to recall them. So say phones out, pen and paper out. So very organized people here with laptops, I love it.
Okay, so you can see people, some people with pens, papers, phones, so brilliant. So first thing I'm going to get you to look at is quite a simple question for a Saturday morning. I want you to look at these words and decide whether they have four letters in or not. So just go through the list and say and in your head, answer the question, do they have four letters in or not? Okay, so hopefully you've got to the end of that list. So the next task is, and again, you don't need to write anything down, is all these words can be scrambled into another word. So I want you to have a go at going through the list, seeing how many times you can scramble up the letters in these words to make another word. Okay, so now I want you to recall, so on that pen and paper or your phone, write down as many words as possible from that list I showed you where I asked you to count how many letters were in the words. So write down as many as you can remember. I recognise the giggle of some people going, I can't remember any now. <laughs> Okay, so I think most people have finished. So I've got another task for you now. On the next slide, you're going to see a question and then you're going to see a load of sentences with a word missing. What I want you to do is look at the end, there's a word at the end and see if that word fits into the sentence. So here we go. So you want to see if the word fits in with that sentence. Okay, so we've now gone to the anagrams again. So again, look through these words, try and scramble them up to make a new word.
OK, so we're now we're back into recalled. So those words that you were trying to fit in the sentence, try and write down as many of those words that you were trying to fit into the sentence. Okay, can you put your hand up if you've finished writing down words? So, finished recalling. Okay, there's still some people writing, so just give them a little bit longer. Okay, so here's the answers to the first two lists. So, they got the first list the four letters one in the second list. So just have a look through and mark yourself. So give yourself one point for every word you got correct. And so you should get a score for the first list and a score you get for the second list. Okay, so this is one of the, um, this little kind of demonstration, so any scientists in the room, this was not an experiment because for an experiment it would have to be run properly. Um, so this little demonstration is about levels of processing. So the idea is that the first list I only asked you to look at surface characteristics. I wasn't asking to look at the meaning of the words. So generally people perform poorer when they do the first list because, say, you don't think about the meaning. And do you remember at the beginning of it, I said our long-term memory relies on either meaning or stories. Um, with the second list, I was think getting you to focus on the meaning of the word. So you were thinking about it, it was kind of forcing you into thinking about the meaning of the word. And this is kind of based on, there's lots of studies that have been done and there were big studies and they're the I picked these studies because they're the easiest ones to find online. And there's been many studies that have shown that the more we get people to think about the meaning, the better people do on the memory tests. So that's the way our long-term memory works. So one of the key things to remember is if you want to remember something long-term, don't try and repeat it. So don't just go, say you met me and you were like, oh, I need to remember a name. Don't go Emma, 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 Emma. Try and think of something that's meaningful. So maybe you go, oh, she's got the same name as the daughter of Rachel and Friends, or something like that. Or I've met lots of Emmas, they're all horrible. Something like that. So think about the meaning, thinking about linking it. So one of the key things about when you're trying to remember something is this elaborate rehearsal. So thinking about the meaning, the analysis of it, the more connections you can make, the better. If you can make connections to something to you personally, even better again, because then it starts bringing in that story aspect to it. And this is one of the things that's really annoying, because what people like to do, especially when they're revising for exams, they like to scan through a book, highlight everything, and they go, right, I've highlighted it, therefore I've remembered it. 
But actually, if you really want to remember it, you need to think about its meaning. Think about how it links to you. If you think learning something for exams, trying to link it into maybe something you've experienced or some problem that you've come across. And I think that would solve the problem. So always think about the meaning. Always try and link it to yourself. That's the way to help you learn something and improve your memory. OK, I love memory tests. So here's another one. So you can get rid of those lists. And this time, you're straight up remembering this. And then I'm going to get you to recall them. So here's the first list. So try and remember as many words as possible on this list. Okay, now I want you to write down as many words as possible. Okay, so hands up if you've finished writing down words. So hands up if you've finished writing down words. Okay, I think that's most people. So now for another list. So this is another list, but one of the things I want you to notice when you're trying to memorise this list, all the words come from four categories. So they're flowers, transport, mythical creatures, or precious stones. So hopefully that might help you a bit. So here's the second list. Okay, so recall. Now write down as many words as possible as you can remember from that list. Okay, so again, hands up if you've finished writing down words. Okay, some people still going. Okay, so there's list one and list two. Again, mark yourself so you get a mark for each one you got correct. So you should get a score for list one and a score for list two.
One of the things you might notice now is list one also all had words coming from categories. So they all, list one also had words coming from four different categories. So again, one of the things you might be finding is that you did better at this too. So one of the things that we rely on, and if you were here in our, my first talk where I, I did the false memory experiment on you, then what we do is we organise things by meaning. So in our heads, everything's kind of organised by meanings. And if you can make those connections between the meanings of the things that we we're trying to remember, then we get stronger memory traces. So although both of those lists had words coming from four different categories, because I pointed out the categories in the second list, then it makes it much easier for kind of us to organise the information. And when you were reading through the list, you were like, oh yes, that's a flower, that's a flower, that's a flower. And you were starting to make those connections and organise the information you're trying to remember. Out of interest, can you put your hand up if you notice list one was made up of four categories? Okay, so quite a lot of you spotted that. That's good. So again, it was good because one of the things I've been talking to you about is thinking about the meaning of the words. So if you were starting to notice that list one had four categories in, it means that you were starting already to start applying what I've been talking about today, which is thinking about the meaning of the words in the lists. <coughs> Wrong way. So this is one of the key things with memory, is about organisation. So we can organise the information that we're trying to remember, then we'll do much better. So again, one of the things that if you were trying to revise something or you're trying to learn something, don't try and copy down the information in the order it's given to you. Always think about the meanings, always think about the structure. Try and organise the way that you work and making your own notes within a structure that um, helps you and helps you organise your memory. There's also the other thing to think about is elaborate. So again, the stronger you can make the story, so if you can think about how those words connect together, think about how the kind of information that you're trying to remember connects to your own life, and you're kind of elaborating on the list. And that's one of the techniques that a lot of memory champions have when they have long lists like this. They'll often kind of visualise the list if they can, and they'll have a story. So, for example, if you visualise your, say, route to work every day, if you're working at home, maybe that's from your bedroom down to your living room, um, or if it's a longer commute, they'll kind of remember a route they do every day, and then they'll place items along the list that they need to remember. So they create it into a bigger more colourful, more a memory that they can feel. And then it will help them recall things. And there are things like the World Memory Championships um, which go on and people remember amazing amounts of things. One of the things that you'll notice if you hear the interviews is these people don't have amazing memories. They don't think they have photographic memories. They're just using these techniques to become very good. And the more they practice, the better they get. So again, if you're thinking about studying, making mind maps can be really useful because it's not so much about the colour, but it's about the organisation. The way you organise, make organisations, the way you make connections between different topic areas. Again, it makes it more elaborate. It makes you think about the meaning constantly, which will really help you. The other thing that I've started to talk about is visual imagery. So, one of the most basic studies, again, it was done a long time ago, but many people have done different variations on it since, found that we're much better at retrieving concrete words versus abstract words. So the example 
you've got, if I was asking you to remember something, that, a list of words like piano and guitar, you're able to imagine really easily. You can visualise a piano. I've picked an image from the internet trying to visualise hope. I don't think if, unless the word was written hope on that stone, you wouldn't know that that image was meant to represent hope. It would be a stone in a hand. <coughs> so this is one of those things that we, if we can visualise things and take the time to think about them, and again, even if it's abstract, trying to think, think about how it might fit into a story, something meaningful to you, or connect it visually with something else, it will help you remember things. This is something that I use in my teaching. So I teach a lot of statistics, and I talk about normal distributions. And it's got a distribution that's very pointy, it's called leptoketosis, and then if you've got a very flat distribution, it's platyketosis. And students really struggle with these terms. So I made this image of a leprechaun riding a platypus. And I say leptoketosis, think of leprechauns, they're very jumpy, they're very bouncy, they would jump over a big pointy distribution. Platyketosis, say think of the platypus, it's got a nice flat back with a gentle curve, so again, it's like a very flat distribution. So it's a bizarre image. You won't come across it every day. And, but again, you're able to visualise it. So I've taken something that's relatively abstract, turned it into a very memorable image. And it's something that, say, 10, 15 years later, I've had students go, I still remember the leprechaun and the platypus. Sometimes they don't remember what they stood for, but they remember the weird image. <laughs> So, and again, this is something that's been looked at um, scientifically. Again, another ridiculously old study, but many, many other studies have followed up. So they've looked in this study where they had a list of words. They had two nouns paired together. And then at the recall stage, they showed one of the nouns, and then they had to recall the word that went with it. And what they found was that imagery was the best. So, if you had, were, saw the word platypus and leprechaun was paired with it, then if you imagine them interacting, then that's going to be your best memory. Sentence generation, <coughs> so putting those two words into a sentence was next. So again, linking to meaning, um, meaning, just reading a sentence wasn't so good, and just wrote, so repeating the words, which again is always our first instinct when we get told to remember something, we just try and repeat it. That was the worst. So again, if you make these memories more richer, more visual, you kind of bring together a much stronger memory trace. So this was an image I started off with. Now I asked you to close your eyes and I told you a story. So everybody, what was the first thing when I told you to close your eyes I asked you to visualise? Your mum. And what was your mum doing? Excellent. So after your mum, what came next? OK, and what was the baby doing? Yep, it was smashing the Play-Doh. And then I asked you to look off to one side. What did you see? OK, so it was a big jar with words falling, going round. And the other side? Excellent. So you've learned something about short-term memory in a long-term memory talk, because at the start I was asking you to use the techniques I talked about during the talk. So, I, so this is what I was talking about, but you also learned something about short-term memory. I want to thank you very much for listening today. There's a brilliant group of psychologists called the Learning Scientists that have loads of hints and tips, so anyone who has to study for something the learning scientists have got a great website, or if you're a teacher, there's loads and loads of resources on there, which I really recommend for helping people learn and memorise the information. And anyone who is struggling with the anagrams, these were the anagrams I showed earlier. But thank you very much for your attention.